I've always dreamed of making a movie, but if there's one thing I'm not good at, it's planning. And planning's kind of the whole thing with movies. It requires so much coordinating and thinking ahead and logistics and communication. So what if you could just pick up a camera and have whatever you pointed at look like a movie? For someone like me, that's kind of the dream. Obviously there are hundreds, if not thousands of factors that go into what makes something look cinematic, look like it's from a movie. But just one of those many different possibilities happens to be anamorphic lenses. Which, if you're unfamiliar with that, it's essentially just a lens that that squeezes more horizontal data into your sensor. So you're able to shoot a little wider horizontally. You get this aspect ratio that you're seeing right now. And as a result of that, you also get this crazy, dreamy, elliptical bokeh that's kind of hard to explain until you see it. And then you also get really unique lens flares that are just characteristic of anamorphic lenses. Historically though, They've cost in the tens of thousands of dollar range, so basically they just didn't exist for normal people, but thankfully that has finally changed. We now have options like this lens, the Sure Venus 35mm full frame anamorphic, which comes in at a reasonable prosumer level price point. It's definitely not cheap but it's very similar to any other full frame lens that you would get for a mirrorless body. Suray sent me this one to try out and they've been really cool about it, just kind of letting me do whatever with it, which is great because I'm definitely not a gear reviewer. I'm really uninterested in talking about tech specs and the edge sharpness and whatever else you talk about with a lens. I'm, I'm far more interested in what type of feeling I can create with a piece of gear as well as how does that piece of gear make me feel when I'm using it. But <laughs> before I get all mushy on you and start talking about my feelings, let's first talk about music and the feeling that it can create. When the goal is to make videos that feel like a movie, music is absolutely crucial for the viewer's experience. I'm sure you've heard the quote by Maya Angelou, people won't remember what you said or did, they'll remember how you made them feel. Music can make or break a video because it carries so much of the emotion and the feeling that you're trying to convey, and that's what the viewer's gonna remember long after they've forgotten what the video was even about. This is why I'm such a massive fan of Musicbed and use it in all of my videos because their collection of music enables me to increase my production value by providing music that's full of so much heart and authenticity. It's music from artists who really care about their work, so when you pair that with your own videos, it's this collaboration between artists where the end product of that can be really powerful. I've also got my own playlist on there. It's just a small collection of songs that I've used in past videos and songs that I really enjoy. So it could be a good starting point for you to start browsing, but hear the difference for yourself and sign up for a free account. If you use the code JakeFruit23 at checkout, you'll get one free month with the purchase of an annual subscription. So overall, this lens has just gotten me stoked to go out and shoot. It's, it's a really unique experience and it causes you to look at framing differently because of the different aspect ratio that it shoots in. I'm definitely a big fan of the, the distortion that you get on the edges of the frame. When you get lines or buildings on the edges of the lens, it has this really surreal feeling or it feels like walls are kind of warping in. And then there's the lens flares, which seem to be a pretty divisive topic for people. Like some people are adamant that the lens flares are terrible and they're the only downside of anamorphic lenses. Other people seem to only want anamorphic for the lens flares. And I don't know, I kind of land somewhere in the middle. Like there's certain situations, 
like when I was driving through this oil refinery by my house, it's a very grungy industrial kind of feel. And so for me, the lens flares look sick in that situation. Like it's really fitting for the scene. But then when I'm at home and it's supposed to be a bit more relatable and just normal looking, I feel like in that scenario, the lens flare becomes a little more distracting. So I don't know, like, don't let anyone tell you if they're great or, or terrible. In my eyes, it's just a creative decision. You can decide if you like them or don't like them. And if you don't like them, you can find ways to avoid the lens flare. As far as downsides, there's honestly not many. The, the main one that comes to mind is just the minimum focus distance, which on this lens is three feet or 0.9 meters. So right now I'm as close as I can possibly get to this lens and have it be in focus so you're not going to be able to get anything very tight you're not going to be able to get good like macro details but as far as i'm aware that seems to be a pretty common characteristic of of most anamorphic lenses i think there are different like screw-on diopters that help you achieve a closer focus but so far that's just kind of been a factor that i've worked with and then beyond that there's a couple other things that definitely aren't even downsides they're just factors that are worth mentioning. First of all being it's only manual focus. I feel like that goes without saying, but when you're in the YouTube space, you just kind of get very used to autofocus and it comes on a lot of lenses now. So just had to note it's manual focus only. That and you also might want a monitor depending on your camera. I shot this video on the FX3, which when I first got the lens, it didn't have any de-squeezing. So I had to learn to shoot with it weirdly squished and it was kind of strange to figure out how to frame shots. But now since then, the FX3 firmware has been updated so I can de-squeeze the footage while I'm shooting. Um, but if your camera doesn't have that option, then a monitor might be nice so that you can de-squeeze as you shoot. So other than that, I'm mostly just glad that Sure sent me this lens because Otherwise, I'm not sure I would have realized what I was missing out on. Not just with this lens specifically, but with gear in general. There's obviously this whole debate of gear matters, gear doesn't matter, which is so tired at this point. Both sides of that debate are applicable in different scenarios. They're both helpful. For different situations but I've always kind of leaned more towards the side the gear doesn't matter and trust me I know how annoying that is to hear from someone on YouTube who's just shooting on incredible gear I, I recognize that I'm sorry I know that's annoying but I've always leaned towards the side that gear doesn't matter because I've loved the freedom that that gives you to just work with what you've got and and go for it but because I sided with that as I continued to upgrade my gear, I never really considered anything unique. I mostly just stuck with the uh, the most common recommendations that I was seeing other people doing. But lately, I've had different pieces of gear come into my collection that actually just inspire me to shoot purely because of the gear. It, it kind of started with the Blackmagic 6K Pro because the image was so incredible and the files were so big that it made me shoot way more intentionally. And then after that, I also got the Fuji X100V that really changed my outlook on photography. But now this Sure lens is just another piece of that puzzle where it's something unique, something that gets me stoked to shoot and achieves a look that's just not possible with any of my other pieces of gear. So if you're looking for something unique and something that makes everyday normal life look just a bit more like a movie, this might be something to consider. Yeah, hey, yeah.